if I don't live in El Paso, if, if I haven't had the experience that we've had, if I live in right. Michigan, Iowa, Oregon, the northern border, I don't, I don't know, know better. any better. And, yeah. and the president of the United States just said that there are rapists and criminals and right. murderers who will chop your head off right. coming to get us. Yeah, build a wall. Beto O'Rourke gets it. The type of nuance he uses there, though, reflecting on the broader Trump phenomenon by understanding it and avoiding the standard holier-than-thou clapbacks set him apart from nearly everyone else who responded last night and everyone else who ran against Trump in 2016. Also sets him apart at this point from everyone else aiming to challenge him in 2020. John, Eddie, Charlie, and Alicia are still here. I, I pulled that out mm -hmm. because... As a former campaign staffer, it boggled my mind that nobody, to beat someone, you have to respect why they're winning. And no one got the power of what he was doing. That was the first time I heard someone say on TV, I, I get why this works. Yeah, it's, it's funny that uh, Beto can use bad words. Uh, I love Rashida that he swears. Tlaib you know what, from a pot, one potty mouth to another potty yeah, mouth, I love it. All, I'm just thinking about what happened to Rashida Tlaib and, and her use of a potty mm -hmm. word. I got no judgment of potty uh, words it's anywhere. Just, it's Unless they're bleep whole nations yeah. for the president. That's it's just an interesting distinction. I think it's a, it's a nice move on the part of Beta, right, to try to, in some ways, exhibit a kind of empathy, to understand uh, what is the attraction uh, to Trump. How, to understand how he, how he weaponizes fear mongering. Exactly, He's how saying he you, weaponizes. you're the president, you stand in the Oval Office and tell everyone they get their heads chopped off. Of course they're so going to fall for it's it. It's one thing to understand it, and I think that's important. It's another thing to, 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 under, to understand its attraction. It's another thing to understand its motivation. Right. So we've been talking about it as being a big lie, but it's also a monument to a particular ideology. Right. And so what is he appealing to? When you, when you understand its attraction, you have to understand its motivation. Its motivation is that Donald Trump is appealing to this idea that the country is no longer white. Yeah. That this is really underneath. I, I tweeted once, I tweeted a couple of days ago, that, that the wall is, is, is the equivalent of people defending Confederate statues. It has nothing to do with history, just like the wall has nothing to do with border security. It's a monument to an ideology. And so as we, as we empathize with with uh, the Trump voter who's attracted to this. We need to understand what's underneath it, what's being activated by Trump, and it's fear. And it's deeply, deeply and profoundly racist, it seems to me. Alisa. I mean, he is wildly charismatic. I think he has the luxury right now of being able to say these things because he does Better, not Trump. Better. Yeah, better. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. He has, the, has the luxury of saying these things because he doesn't have an official position. I think once this race starts, it's much more complicated. And I think he's dragging his feet because this is a big decision, mm. right? This is, this is the biggest decision you'll ever make in your entire life to run for president. He has a family, he has little kids. And so he's putting the time in. I think the challenge in this environment is going to be there are a lot of people who want to run. At some point, just these staffers, these donors, they become the major motivation for making a decision about whether or not you jump in. I hey. like what I've read, though, yeah. about him ignoring some of the conventions. Yes. Because, no. because you have to study the person who won last. The person who won right. last was Donald Trump. Right. Everything about him is abhorrent. But he did figure out how to win by bucking the system. And so I, I like the stories I, that I see about Beto having the courage to buck the system. Uh, but I would like to like offer a small dissent here, because I think that the meta-analysis of what he's doing is very, very interesting. And yet, the only thing that most people heard from that soundbite was that he's dropping F-bombs. And I think that, that's a they, generational thing, that with all may, due they respect. May, that, may be, that may be, but I think there's an expiration date on it. You know, that, that after a while, is, like, is this really the way you're introducing yourself to the American people? Uh, we're all political geeks, so we follow what happened in Texas. The vast majority of Americans, um, non-Texas, do not know who this guy is. And they're hearing, he's this young guy who, who you, you know, dropped, dropped F-bombs. Now, he's saying very interesting things, and he's doing analysis, and he's trying to show that, that he, you know, has, has, has the Trumpian thing. But it's a high-risk strategy, particularly when you have all the other candidates out there. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.